Hi everyone, so <clears throat> we are doing this. It's just overall weird to start and talk to a camera instead of having a conversation with someone because it's so one-sided. Get these shoes off. So I'm not in London right now. I am in Portugal. I came here for the holidays, got here yesterday, and I thought this could be a good time to like maybe film a couple of videos. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, things you wanted me to talk about in videos, what you wanted to know. And one of them was top tips for music photography. As some of you may know, I'm working as a music photographer, freelance, and I just thought I would share some tips for someone who's curious, who's starting out or whatever the case may be. Different things will work for different people, but this is kind of like my top tips. So. First of all, when you go to shoot a gig, there's like a few different scenarios that can be happening. You're getting paid for it, you get commissioned to do it by the artist or maybe the promoter. Even the music venue sometimes they want some documentation for their website or something like that. Or you can just do it for free. Some venues you can um, just walk in with a camera, especially DIY, independent, smaller venues, which is what I usually prefer. Because once you start going to bigger venues, like, you know, the rules just get stricter and you can't really use flash. Sometimes you can only stay for up to like three songs, which is not the best time to be shooting a band because they're just warming up, like there's no sweat and things get really good as it goes. And on bigger venues, you can't really get to that point because you're basically either kicked out um, of the venue itself after you shoot or you're just asked to leave the photo pit. So yeah, so that sucks a bit. So when speaking about smaller independent uh, music venues, you many times can go there for free. I've been doing that for a while. Like before I started making any money, really considering this, a, you know, like something more serious, like a career or anything like that. I would go in for free many times and shoot for free. And that's kind of how you start. So you want to get there early. I think this is pretty obvious, but um, you need to get a good like advantage, advantage, advantageous advantageous <laughs> English is not my first language so you need to get there early before a lot of people are there so you can be closer to the stage so if you are like more interested in a specific person in the band if the stage is already set up and you know what instrument they play let's say you really want to get some shots of I don't know the drummer or the synth player or the lead singer whatever it is like make sure that you know where the instrument is on stage when you're there and you position yourself near that instrument so that you can get a good shot of that person. Um, when possible, maybe familiarize yourself with the venue if you can, if it's like a venue in a city that you live in. It's good to kind of know how busy it gets, um, how tall the stage is, how big the stage is. So you can kind of like be more strategic with your approach to it. For me, I basically shoot quite like high contrasted, like black and white images. So obviously my priority when I'm shooting would be different to uh, people who shoot color or uh, don't use flash and stuff like that. So for me, the things that I pay attention to would be different to what other photographers with a different style pay attention to. I don't have to pay a lot of attention to color. That's completely secondary because it's all going to be black and white. So I, I can give more priority to the composition, the background. I'd like to avoid 
busy, confusing backgrounds to the shots and I'm thinking about that. Um, I think a lot of questions that people have about equipment that's never really been a priority. Three years ago, I was shooting in like not the best like camera and to this day, some of those first shots of those first two years, this is one of my favorites. It's really not about the equipment you have and I think people feel very pressured to always get the new thing and the best thing and the most expensive thing when in reality but that's something to think about a little bit later I think when you're starting off it's good not to really pressure yourself but using that as an excuse or um, just having the best equipment out there I think you should just go use what you have and as you go, when you see your pictures, you're gonna understand the things that you think you're missing, the things you wish you could improve. Oh, I wish, you know, I'm cutting off like arms, I'm cutting off legs on pictures. Maybe I need a wider angle lens. And then that's what you go and get. Or let's say, oh, I don't, I don't really like using flash, so I need a lens that has a really large aperture because I need more light to come in with a higher shutter speed so you don't, so you don't lose um, sharpness in the movements. So to be fair, I think you should go with whatever you have and as you go, as you understand specific things you want to improve in your pictures, you upgrade your equipment as you find that out. Sometimes having limitations helps you be creative and helps you um, problem solve and helps you, you know, just grow faster and like learn faster. And I don't think it's a bad thing to not give yourself like the best of out of the best in the very beginning. So another tip that I think may be valuable, it may seem obvious, but um, it's something that I've kind of learned to do as I've been gaining experience and going to more concerts. Observe the people on stage, their movements. Sometimes when they're singing a certain song that has a certain beat, they will be moving in accordance to that beat. Let's say that every time, every time there's a beat, the guitarist like goes down and like, <laughs> Uh, flips their hair or whatever like they keep doing it with that beat and as soon as you, as you know that you can prepare yourself for like when they raise back up maybe and you can take the picture then it's good to understand their movements and their patterns so you can use that to your advantage and get the shot of the best time possible honestly there's I feel like there's so many different things and so many different subtopics to this um, and it would be a very long video so I just want to know what else would you like to know leave it in the comments down below uh things that you want to know like more specific things what you need help with what you need some advice on things you want to discuss um yeah just let me know so that i can just do another video about them and be more specific on something that you need advice on sorry that i've been looking everywhere i think it's something that you get used to and comes with practice and stuff oh my god disaster that it comes with practice and stuff. This is new to me, but I've been watching a lot of vlogs and stuff and I think it's quite fun to be taken along someone else's life and see what they do and see how they act and what makes them them. And um, especially when it's in different countries and people that you would never probably meet. I don't know, I just think it's interesting. Maybe, I hope you guys think this is interesting. This is not really scripted. So this is just me having a chat with you guys and hopefully you learned something new, you got inspired to go shoot. Send me your pictures guys, I want to see it, I want to talk about it, I want to help you guys, I want to discuss, I want you guys to help me. And I'll see you guys soon. Realistically, I'm maybe trying to aim one every two weeks, maybe one once a week, but when I go back to London that might be a little bit harder to do. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Thanks so much for watching, this is so cool. I've been wanting to do this for so long and hearing that some of you wanted to actually see it has been like the final push that I needed and thanks so much guys. Hope you have a good day and speak to you soon. Bye!